Hey, so I wanted to make a quick video on how we can get ambient occlusion working in Unreal 5 um, with Lumen. Now the TLDR, uh, the easiest way to do it and the most physically accurate way is to go into project settings, search for static lighting and disable static lighting, then restart the editor. Uh, now doing this will mean that you can't bake maps, you can't bake light maps, you can't bake shadow maps, but it will make Material AO work. So this is what things will start to look like when we have uh, global, uh, when we've been globally disable um, static lighting. It's subtle, you know, the AO is there, but it's hard to see, it's hard to notice. If I turn it off, or more accurately turn it up really high, you can see what, like it is actually doing something now, which is an improvement, but it is subtle. Um, and that's because AO is subtle, like that's just the reality of it. Like Lumen is designed to simulate how light acts in real life. So when it's influencing AO, it's going to influence it in a way that, you know, replicates what we see in reality. Um, if I turn it off at this point with a glancing angle, it's going to be a little more noticeable, like turning up high. You can see it is physically accurate. That's the main thing we're looking at here. You know, like when we move our lighting around, the AO is adjusting in real time. If we do it through this method, where we, uh, you know, multiply by the specular and the fuse, it's not going to, you know, be influenced by lumen. It's just going to be this kind of, you know, baked layer on top of everything else, which just doesn't, it doesn't look good. You know, it doesn't look realistic. Um, now, granted, if you're going for a more stylized approach, if you were going for more something influenced by, you know, your art direction a little more, then it could work. But in most situations, we'll probably want to go for the more realistic take. Now, another advantage of using TrueAO um, with static lighting and tabled is that it respects significantly more complex materials. So, I'll open this one up. Um, like I said, more complex material doesn't just use a few maps. It doesn't just use a few rendering methods. It's using a lot of different, you know, not only is it, this is also a nanite asset. So it shows that it does work with nanite, but it also shows it works with significantly more complex materials. So turning the occlusion power off, we can see that we're getting quite a lot less soft shadowing and darkening around this like crystal layer here. Turning back on, you can see we're getting more of it. And what's cool is that it's also respecting subsurface scattering. So if I get, where's the light gone? Um, there we go. If I get the light in here and start to mess with the values, you can see it's actually not changing, like, or, or barely changing, but it's not changing at all around the areas that have this subsurface scattering influence, which is great because it means that, um, you know, it's being physically accurately respected um, by, you know, uh, by Lumen and by extension, the subsurface scattering stuff that we've got going on here. Um, and you know, it's it's you could hook in the other method for doing this, the um, the diffuse multiplication thing, but it wouldn't work great with um, subsurfacing. It wouldn't work great with uh, complex materials like this because you'd have to hook it into you know all your base color processing and all that stuff. It just is safer to use proper AO processing, especially if you're going for realism. Now, if you can't disable static lighting for whatever reason, like maybe you need to um, you need to get a bake. You know, light maps, you need to be able to bake shadow maps, you need to be able to bake, you know, whatever lighting related thing that you need to do. Or maybe your, you know, your project lead doesn't want to separate state lighting, maybe you're on a team that can't do this, you can't make big changes to the editor for the same reason you might not want to install a plugin or something, that's fine. Uh, there are ways we can, you know, kind of fake AO in our material. The classic method is just to, pro um, to multiply the diffuse layer here with um, the ambient occlusion layer. Now this is just a um, a uh, named reroute node with the my diffuse material in it or my diffuse texture, sorry. And we're multiplying the AO map by the diffuse map, and we would get a result that looks like this, which seems cool. Um, but the problems with this, a it doesn't react to lighting; it's baked, so you know it doesn't matter what the light looks like; it's still going to add that soft shadowing no matter what the situation is, whether the light is hitting it directly, whether the light is hitting it indirectly, or whether it's fully in shadow, it's gonna look exactly the same. The other problem is that we get uh, specular highlights on the shadowed areas, which is, and this is more of a thing that, um, you know, is concerning about this method. Um, previously, and the way it's often recommended, just multiplying it by the, you know, diffuse layer doesn't do the job. Um, if we turn the AO influence up really high to like a like a 10, or sorry, it was 200, like a 10, um, by default, it's going to look like this once this saves. So we can see what the issue is here. Um, we're still getting specular highlights in the shadowed areas, which is not right. <laughs> you know, like the shadowed areas should have reduced specularity as well as, you know, darker color. 
because there's no light to bounce off these areas that are fully in black. So the way I tend to fix that in situations where I can't disable um, static lighting is to just take that same AO layer, and in this case it's just um, it's a lerp between one and the AO layer based on a uh, scalar parameter. That's just making it so that I can you know really easily change how much the AO is influencing the uh, diffuse and specular layers. And that's multiplying a base specular parameter, a scalar parameter, uh, of 0 0.5 by default, because that's what the default value is for Unreal, by that AO layer. So plugging it in and saving it, you can see really clearly what kind of result we're getting. Uh, multiplying the specular by the AO gives a much more realistic result than just multiplying it by the diffuse layer. So taking this back to a more reasonable value, you can see the difference we get. And this gives us more artistic control over our AO. We can really easily choose how it's influencing everything. Like if I wanted to have it really harsh, if I was in a really, you know, a situation that called for it, I could do it. Um, if I wanted to have it to be really subtle, I could do that too. The other problem with this setup is that it can be complicated to work into more complex materials, stuff that actually requires, you know, existing uh, influence on the speculars, things that require complex influence on the diffuse, but it works well for simple objects like this that are really only taking in a few texture parameters and doing a little bit of light processing on each of them. Now, to go into a little more detail on, you know, how Lumen treats AO, um, I think there's a bit of a misconception about Lumen with AO. People seem to think it doesn't actually have an AO system. It does. Um, it's just part of the global, global illumination system. So previously, you could just head into you know your post-processing volume and find your AO settings and just tweak them that way. That's not how we can do things anymore because Lumen's, or at least if you're using Lumen, because Lumen's AO is not a post-processing setting. It's included in the GI pass. So that's actually a really good thing because it means that you know anything that is usually influenced by Lumen's GI, all the lighting and all the color and all that stuff is also being influenced by the AO in a realistic fashion. The other good thing is that it means it's going to be uh, influenced by any of your, you know, lumen affecting, you know, light influencing actors. So your directional lights, your height fog, sky atmosphere, skylight, etc. cetera. Uh, and again, that's a really good thing because it means that we're gonna get realistic results out of our AO or, you know, realistically out of our GI because that's actually what we're dealing with at this point. Um, so if you want to influence your AO, in your actual scene, not just on your materials, you need to do it through your lighting actors. So all the stuff that would usually influence lumen lights will influence the material AO, or sorry, not the material AO, the scene AO. So if I, even if I just change the light direction with a control L, we can see, like if you watch the, uh, watch the soft shadowing around the edge of that barrel there, hopefully it shows up all right on YouTube compression, you can see that that AO is being directly influenced by the global illuminations that change the lighting. We start to get into overhead lights, we get less and less AO, like it's actually a really, really good, really accurate system um, to the point where it's as good as, you know, ray traced AO is, which is saying something. So hopefully that, you know, clarifies some stuff. Hopefully it was helpful. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more documentation on this from uh, Epic's perspective. There is stuff on it, but it's not, you know, directly in the materials stuff. It's more, you know, inside the Lumen GI page and the documentation, things like that. So if you don't know where you're looking, it's a bit hard to find it. But yeah, hopefully that was helpful.